What is going on people? Leah here from Creative Tech Lab and today we are talking about two Sony cameras, very similar, the Sony RX100 six versus seven. Um, two very similar cameras. We're gonna talk about whether the seven is actually worth the $100 upgrade, so let's get into it. If it is that you're new here, please go ahead and consider hitting the subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. Talk a lot about run and gun videography here, so I don't think you'll be disappointed and it would help out the channel a lot. All right, so if it is that you're new here, just to give you a little background, I got the Sony RX100 Mark VI last year when it came out for a milestone trip to Italy. I wanted something that was better than my cell phone and had some pro grade features. In learning how to use that camera, I came here to the YouTube University and that's also what spurred me to start my YouTube channel after getting inspired by some of the people here on the platform. So I do have extensive experience with the 6 in particular that's a little bit different from all the other previous versions with the long zoom. But this year Sony released the RX100 Mark 7 with some notable upgrades that people have been wanting for. So the question is, how do these two compare and is seven worth the upgrade over the six? We're gonna attempt to answer those questions here real quick. We'll run through the similarities and then the quick differences and then we'll talk about whether or not they're worth it. So these cameras are basically identical. Just looking at them, you cannot really tell the difference unless you actually look at the top to see where it's six or seven or if you're looking for the mic jack. So form factor is the same, image quality, is the same. Equivalent um, focal length is the same. 24 to 200, these are the longer zoom range which is different from the five and everything before it which was 24 to 70. Image quality I already said is the same. Low light is the same because it has the same aperture 2.8 to 4.5. They do claim that there should be a little bit of an improvement in terms of low light noise but in real world use I've not been able to see a difference battery life is also the same they also claim that because of the new chip that's in there that there should be an extra additional 10 minutes in battery life over the seven to the six but in real world use i actually haven't been able to see a real difference there just know that if you buy these particular type of cameras that you're going to need a bunch of extra batteries to get you throughout a full day of travel or filming or whatever it is that you're doing so all right so let's go ahead and talk about how these cameras are different one of the biggest additions to this camera and something that people have been asking for for years, especially from the vlogger community, is a microphone jack. So if you look at the six here, it only has two ports there, uh, micro USB and uh, HDMI out. On the seven, you have three ports here, HDMI out and the micro USB, but that little red one right there is a microphone jack and that is huge especially for people that are looking to vlog. So the other major difference between these two cameras are autofocus. So the autofocus system that is in the 7 is the A9 system. It's super, super blazing fast. Real-time eye autofocus in movie record mode is also very, very different. So of course, all the talking points that seem to be given to all the YouTubers before this and influencers was that the 7 is a baby A9. Get to some of the other things while they're saying that, but autofocus was supposed to be a big deal. And in particular for video shooters like myself, real time eye autofocus. However, this is no slouch on the autofocus as well, which is a six, which this has real time face tracking. And this is footage from the seven, um, just jumping up and down. And then I was running back and forth here just to see if it would keep me in focus and then getting as close to the camera as I thought I needed to get. And you can see the 7 definitely does an awesome job in terms of keeping focus and then when sometimes I felt like I may have gotten a little bit too close to the lens and then it had to just find where my eye was but as I was looking on the screen it was locked on to my eye almost the entire time when I got a little bit further away it did switch to face just for a couple of different times but other than that it was completely locked on to my eyes however if you look at the test i did both cameras were running at the same time and i did the exact same test with the six and the results are 
extremely similar. You didn't get eye autofocus, but I got face tracking the entire time that I was going back and forth, jumping in and out of the frame. You may see here that I actually just didn't give it enough time, but it actually kept, it actually held the focus point, expecting me to come back, to jump back up into the frame. So it caught me right away as I got up there. As I moved back and forward, it never took my face out of focus. So. I autofocus might seem like a really big deal. I think it might be a little bit bigger for still shooters than it is for video shooters, but the six does have I autofocus for stills, just not for video. I think overall though, in actual use cases, it's not that different. None of these are actually missing focus. This autofocus is blazing fast. All right, so the other difference that between these two cameras, especially big for vloggers, is active steady shot in 4K. Some people may shoot in 4K, some people may shoot in 1080p, but this is a big deal because you kind of want to be shooting in 4K as much as possible. But as far as active steady shot, if you don't know what it is, that's Sony's in-body stabilization, or I guess it could also refer to, since these cameras have built-in lenses, I guess it could also be talk about the lens. So in the first two clips here, I am comparing the active steady shot to the regular steady shot for the seven versus the six. As you can see here, as I'm rolling, there is a little bit more shake in the six than there is on the seven. So there's definitely an improvement there if you're just holding the camera around vlogging on the terrain that I'm walking on. I'm coming downstairs, I'm walking on grass, on even grass, on even terrain there. So this is kind of what it would look like in probably some of the worst conditions. It's definitely gonna help to smooth out that footage. However, if it is that you did opt for the six over the seven, something that we're gonna talk about in a little bit is that you wouldn't actually be able to record for a long period of time in 4K anyway. In 1080p, you do have um, the option to do intelligent active steady shot, which is a little bit better. And I kind of compared those two intelligent active versus the 4K just active steady shot there. And the 1080p intelligent active footage is a little bit more stable when it is that you put them side to side. So that might be something for you to consider. And that's actually a great segue into the 4K record limits and overheating issues. So I've used both of these cameras extensively now, well I guess the 7 for a few months since it's been out, but I can tell you on the 6, not only do you have a 4K 5 minute recording limit, which seems like it wouldn't be that a big deal because when it is that you're doing some of these videos, at least particularly for me, I know that I'm messing up. I know that I'm gonna have to cut things together. So if it was a five minute limit, that might be enough time for me to do each individual take. However, once it is that you start to brush up on your first five minutes, you're going to run into overheating issues. And sometimes it would take me forever to finish a video that I started in 4K because I have to stop and start, stop and start to wait on the camera to cool itself down so that I could finish a particular take. And that is incredibly annoying. On the new 7 though, those issues have gone away. You do need to go into a special setting in the camera and turn on the high temperature settings there. And then once you do that, you pretty much are gonna be able to record until the battery runs out. The battery will run out way before any overheating issues actually pop up. I've not run into any overheating issues with this camera, which is an amazing little feat for a camera that's this small to be shooting in 4K and not be overheating. Another small difference there, camera does have vertical um, record mode. So if it is that you do record in vertical mode and you wanna do stuff for Instagram and stuff, the camera should automatically recognize that you shoot it in vertical and give you a vertical video rather than on the six in the previous versions, it would still give you a landscape video and then you'd have to go ahead and rotate it in post not a big deal to me it's not a big deal to have to rotate something 90 degrees but it may speed up your workflow and if you do vlog a lot and you are going to be doing content for say a youtube and you're going to be doing something for instagram stories or snapchat could be something that's important to you on the still side the upgrade on the still side is that this camera the 7 is actually able to do burst mode of 20 frames per second with no blackout versus the six doing 24 frames per second, but with a blackout. 
I'm not exactly sure what that means and why that's important. On a camera this small, for the most people that will be using it, including myself, that's not a big enough thing to move the unit there, so I'm not gonna delve too far into that, but if you're a super camera-holic, that might be a big, big deal to you. It's similar to what's on an A9, so maybe if you have an A9 and you want a pocket A9 to match exactly how you're doing things, then that could move the needle for you. I don't know, I don't shoot too many burst photos, so. I can't really say that, but I thought I'd just mention it because it was a big deal. On the side of interval shooting or just burst shooting versus interval shooting, the 7 does have built-in interval shooting, which means you can do a time lapse just in camera. No additional apps, no, don't have to buy an intervalometer, any of those things. This one is the most frustrating feature because this should be offered to six users in a software update. I'm pretty sure if they're able to do this for the a7 III and some of the other alpha cameras in a firmware update, I'm certain that they'll be able to put this into the six, but I kind of feel like they haven't put out a firmware update to the six, just so it'd be an additional reason to maybe upgrade from the six to the seven. It does come in handy. I'll link up here to a video on how to turn it on and how to get it done if you don't know how to do it on the Sony cameras. I have one specifically on the 7 on how to do a time lapse. Great feature that's built into the camera, but realistically, it should have been on the 6 or should be offered to the 6 people eventually. And then the last minor detail is on the 6 it has a pop up viewfinder and you don't have to do anything on the previous versions, you have to pull it out. There were a few people that were complaining that the 6 version, the little eyepiece right here that you do to adjust it, will become undone just by opening and close it. Those issues supposedly have all been fixed on the 7 and there's no issue. So that's a minor thing if you do shoot through the viewfinder or whatever, those issues have, should have been completely fixed. That was a minor, minor, minor issue on the 6, but I just thought I would mention it. All right, so those are all the major differences or anything that's worth noting for, I guess, for me or any content creators or whatever. So the question is, is it worth getting the seven over the six? So let me kind of break it down into two different categories. One, if it is that you're just looking to get one of these cameras and this is gonna be the first time you're buying it and you're looking for six versus seven, at the time of this particular filming, there is a $200 difference in between the two cameras. I would say if it is that you're a content creator and you're going to be vlogging and you need the extra mic jack and the extended 4K recording, then 100% go ahead and get the 7. However, the other people, the other type of person that would be looking for a camera like this is somebody that is traveling, has a family, looking to shoot more family stuff, kids, family reunions, whatever, so have you just day-to-day -day life they're not gonna be vlogging, they're not gonna be using necessarily 4K to shoot everything in to put on the tube or need a microphone jack to get pristine audio. If you're that person, the autofocus or the time-lapse feature and all those things, I don't know if that's worth $200. At the end of the day, $200 is still $200. You could put that into some additional accessories like a gimbal, or you're gonna need some additional batteries. You're definitely gonna be able to put that money into something else to use this camera. So if it is, I think you, some people, if it is that you're just using it for family use, the 6 is still a great camera. It has all the pro-grade features of any other alpha camera that's out there, and you could get some still some cool images, albeit mostly, actually even in the 4K, as long as you're not shooting extended 4K clips, you could still do your thing. But if it is that you're gonna be vlogging in 4K or doing YouTube or anything like that, then 100% spend the extra money and go ahead and get the seven. Now, the other question would be, if it is that you already own the six, is it worth getting rid of your six or getting the seven? And I am going to say at this time, I don't think it's worth the upgrade. The things that are in this camera, it's a bunch, it's almost like an iPhone S upgrade. It's one of those years where it's very, very, very incremental on the update, but I don't think it would be worth going out and buying a whole new camera and then having to potentially sell this for whatever it is that you could get it for. I think it might be better off if you did want some of the features 
that are in this camera going ahead and getting like maybe a a6400 or a6000 or something along those range an interchangeable lens camera but i'm actually going to do a comparison to those two i'll do a comparison on the rx107 versus the a6400 and a comparable lens setup there and then i will also do my full review on this camera to see if i'm going to keep it in the upcoming weeks or so so as you know it's coming here you know should know what to do i should not tell you what to do go ahead hit the subscribe button hit the notification button you will not be disappointed there will be more on this topic if this particular video helped you out in any way shape or form which hopefully it should this is why i do these videos i think it's the holidays a lot of people are looking at getting a new camera and might need some help on the research hopefully my opinion helped if it did drop the video a like this also helps out the channel and i'd greatly appreciate it also if you're looking to get any one of these two cameras links down below these do link back to amazon but it does help to give the channel a kickback and it doesn't cost you anything and i'd greatly appreciate it otherwise stay creative keep creating keep doing your thing and i will catch you in the next one peace Bye.